I had a dream in which I was in my bed and um, besides me sat a demon. Hey guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I'm here with Emil. How you doing, Emil? I'm doing well, mate. How are you? Good, man. Um, today we do have a sensitive topic. Yeah. And it's in regards to demons. Yeah. Uh, we want to talk about a few things that uh, the Bible speaks about demons, because mm-hmm. um, obviously we don't get it out of nowhere. We yeah. we do find uh, demons in the Bible. Uh, at the same time, we can also speak about maybe our personal experiences if we have any. Sure. And maybe the third part, uh, we could also speak about how often we live a life, it's as if there, there's no demons, right? Mm. Um, so we just okay. thinks, th- think everything is maybe just bad luck or, yeah. you know, things are not going my way. And sometimes it can be, I'm, yeah. I'm not the type of person that would say, um, finding under, demons under rocks. Yeah. yeah. Under every rock. Yeah. But in the sense that there is dark spiritual, um, powers, yeah, powers at play yeah. in your everyday life. 100%. And as it says in Peter, that the devil is like a lion. A roar, know, like a roaring lion. Yeah. yeah. He's just prowling around mm-hmm. waiting to find someone to devour. Yeah. And I think that happens on a daily basis. Yeah. But by the grace of God, <laughs> we have the Holy Spirit. We have the protection of Jesus <clears throat> that we're not vulnerable That's right. to the devil. So we are protected by Christ. But sometimes... Mm-hmm. We put our armor down, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, we get hit. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think first maybe we should discuss what is a demon. Okay. So, what is a demon? Uh, all right. Um, to me, if I'm going to give you like a small introduction mm-hmm. to what demons are, I would say that demons were created as angels. Okay. So the book of Jude speaks about them being angels of light. And because of sin, they became demons in living in darkness. Now, those demons are spirits because angels are ministering spirits. So demons became evil Mm -hmm. spirits. And those evil spirits, um, contrary to what some people believe, they are not, um, I would say, like an electricity or power. They're a person. They're, yeah. they, they have personality. Yeah. And one of the simple examples you'll see in the Bible is when Jesus interacts with them. Mm-hmm. They speak with Jesus. So they have, they can form sentences. Mm-hmm. They they have a will. They have a mind. And they have a plan. Just, right. uh, just, just like the angels that came before Abraham. Yep. The two angels. Um, and the angel of the Lord. Um uh, they appeared as people. They spoke. They interacted. People could see them. They yeah. Demons can do the same thing. That That is an interesting um, question or, or a topic. I don't I don't re- have anything on the There's top no of reference my mind. To it. No. Yeah, th- that's, There's no reference to them appearing in a human form. Unless, unless if you're going to... Possession. At, yeah, possession. That's yeah. one thing. But unless... If you have the perspective, because, you know, there's two views Mm -hmm. when Saul goes to the medium and she summons Samuel. Mm -hmm. So some people would say that's a familiar spirit. That's not Samuel. That's just a demon in disguise. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if you're going to disguise yourself as Samuel, that's a human being, right? So you're making yourself appear like a human being. Um, that's one perspective. Others, they just say, well, God granted Samuel to show up to to, sh- to give Saul a message. Mm-hmm. I do hold on the first part. Mm-hmm. So in saying that, yeah, they can disguise themselves as human beings because, as Paul said, that the devil can come as the angel of light. Mm-hmm. So, so if an angel of light can come as a person and the devil can come as an angel of light, yeah, that's shape okay. shifting, whatever they call it these days. Yeah. It's so, just, it, it logically it makes sense. That's interesting. But I would say it's not something that you would encounter every day. So please don't yeah. go around and uh, <laughs> 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 
thinking like the person that you're talking to is <laughs> potentially a demon. Please don't do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's actually a good question. Unless that's it's something topic. that was only allowed by God. That was like something that they cannot normally do. It's only something that they could do because God wanted it to happen. Maybe because, you know, in saying that man is created in the image of God. Mm hmm. And I don't know if God wants to allow demons mm -hmm. to casually um, kind of adapt themselves to to God's image. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that's something very unique. So only if beings. God allows it. So, for example, if God wants a demon to be in the form of a human, yeah, for whatever reason, he it can happen. But otherwise, it's not something that ordinarily like it's it's not mentioned, so we don't know for sure. Yeah. I mean, unless let's just leave a, it there. Yeah, as I said, like with Samuel, if if you actually think it's a familiar spirit, which I believe that's the case, but even then, it doesn't mean that 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 Samuel was there in the flesh, regardless of whether it was, was a yeah, like it, a it was it was a a spiritual entity appearing, manifesting physically, and that could have like, how do we know that that wasn't the case with um, with Abraham? How do we know that they were actually humans? They were just some sort of human-like beings. But that doesn't mean they were literally humans. They well, appeared like humans. Yeah, well, obviously they go down to Sodom and Gomorrah mm. and the Bible starts to People speak see of them. them. Yeah, they yeah. start to speak the, of them as angels. Mm. So they are angels. Um, They're appearing as men. Yeah, they appeared as men. And same thing with Jesus' tomb. Mm. When they went and saw the empty tomb, they saw two men clothed in white. Yeah. Um, and they said, he's not here, he's risen. Um, so so you do have that. But one thing actually, actually it's interesting. Oh, no. I was thinking, is there a record of them being touched physically? And that does happen but in Sodom and Gomorrah. Eat? And didn't they also eat like food? Didn't they interact with food? Yeah, well, when Lot obviously invited them yeah. in and was so they were there physically yeah. they were there physically, were physically but what i'm saying is we don't know that they were actually humans well we know that they weren't humans but as in they weren't actually in a physical how do i say it like human flesh they were just appearing as humans yeah well, with my perspective on angels they do have bodies they're not like what you see mm. in a cartoon where it's like a ghost. A spiritual body. Yeah, it's a spiritual body. But we don't even know what spiritual body even means, really. We, we don't have a way to measure it or even know what it... No, not really. Like you got First Corinthians 15, where it speaks about like our own bodies, for example. Uh, Paul is saying, the way you sow a seed, what comes out of a seed is a plant. So what you're sowing is different than what's coming out. And he's bringing that analogy in the sense of saying, um, guess what, guys? The way you're buried is not going to be the same way that you're going to be resurrected because mm -hmm. your glorified body is going to be something totally different, different yeah. to what's going in the ground. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's an interesting topic. Now we're getting into resurrection stuff. Yeah, yeah. let's just um, go back to talk. Um, to our yeah, topic. so obviously we spoke about demons in that sense that so they're they, fallen angels and they are fallen angels and they can take different forms mm. um we know that 100 percent they can take different forms yeah um we know that they can appear as serpents we know that they can appear as like an angel of light so um we know that they can change the way they're perceived by people um well wouldn't wouldn't that really be a very important thing that kind of drives out their nature is deception. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I mean, they're, that's where lying started from. Mm. It's from them. So they're the greatest of deceivers. And um, so we just... That when... reminds me of a God yeah, in a different... Not good <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so when, when we're... When, we're when, when it says that people are lying, he calls them children of the devil. Like, yeah, because your father is a liar, right? That's what he says to them. So, I I, th I think um, demons are deceivers. I think demons are by their nature they're just they want to deceive because ultimately, what do they really have? What do they have to offer you? 
really. I mean, if you look at it, what do they have that they can that you can kind of want to be like, oh, I want to join their side. The, the, all they have is this world, which is temporary. They know that everything they have is temporary. It's falling apart. The ship is burning and they're trying to do whatever they can to keep people on board, but the ship's on fire. So the only way to, for them to keep you on there is to convince you that it's not on fire or to convince you there is no fire to begin with. It's just a ship. You know, this yeah. is everything's fine. There's nothing to worry about. It's just business as usual. And I think that's what the devil has been doing in, in this world. It's not that he's trying to convince people to join him. He's convincing people that he's not there. There is no devil. There is no hell. There is no heaven. And there's even some Christians that started believing this nonsense. There, there is no heaven, that there is no hell, uh, that heaven is just a place that everyone has their own heaven. And it's just like... They just make up their own stuff. Some people believe in heaven, but they don't believe in hell. Uh, people don't go to hell. It's hell's only for demons, and um, if they even believe in hell. But um, yeah, it's stuff like that. And, uh, and and this is just deception from the devil. It's just for you to feel safe, like nothing's wrong. Yeah, and 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 the difference in nature between how God operates with us and how mm-hmm. demons do is that. When we come to God, it's more about um, he, he gives you your space. He respects your decisions. He honors your decisions in the sense that if you surrender to him and you're willing to receive mm-hmm. him, then he gives you his spirit. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, you look at demons. It's more is by force that they want to possess a human being. Yeah. But by the spirit we are possessed by the holy spirit as we surrender and the holy spirit is a spirit that gives peace love joy we experience the beauty of god in the holy spirit because that's what the fruit of the spirit is but the fruit of the devil it's nothing close to that it's anxieties it's uh, fear. weaknesses yeah it's fear it's insecurities and and you see people coming to Jesus like you got the person that was even they tried to chain him put him in caves no one was able to deal with him you look at his state in life he was naked you know he was basically crazy out of his mind mm-hmm. and you're like that's the fruit of the possession of a devil yeah, it's an un- it's something yeah. unclean because he was in unclean places, yeah. and, and when and he was yeah. himself unclean because the spirit that's in him is an unclean spirit. Yeah, and, and when the Bible uh, after Jesus delivers him from these <clears throat> demons, which is a legion, mm-hmm. the Bible says that he was calm, and they clothed him. You know, so you could see that there was a restoration there. So. When the demon comes, as Jesus spoke about, when the demon is driven out, when he comes, he finds the place clean. Mm -hmm. So when the devil is cast out, you see there is this cleansing that happens in a person's life. Yeah. Right? Um, And we're not talking about Christians because I don't personally believe Christians can be possessed. So... You're not a Christian if you're being possessed. Yeah. How can you have two spirits in you? Yeah. You either have the Holy Spirit or you have the devil. Yeah. If you have the devil, then you're not a Christian. Yeah. Uh, um, but what Jesus was talking about is, is those people who come and encounter God. When the devil's driven out, you see there's a cleansing and the house is put in order. So you, you start seeing life yeah. is coming together again and it's making sense and there is a purpose there. God is putting a purpose there. But if we neglect that, if we forsake the Holy Spirit, you know, walk away from God, the fellowship of the church, yeah. then we are putting ourselves in a darker place. Yeah. And especially if we go back to the world, unfortunately, it's very, very sad. I've seen so many people who were in the church, in the faith, in the word, um, hungry for God. Mm. When they walked away from God, even though I knew their previous past before they were Christian, when they went back in the world, it was way worse. 
Yeah. It was way worse. Um, and I don't think most of those times, because I, I know like there's a lot of Christians, especially in like the Pentecostal evangelical mm -hmm. um, side of things, they are really quick to claim possession. Like, oh, this guy's possessed. This guy's, uh, we need to exercise the spirit. And most of the times it's not that there's a demon in him. It's just there's a demon influencing him. Yeah. And demons influence everyone in the world. Yeah. They just say a word and they do it. It doesn't mean there's a demon inside the person because demonic possession is a completely different game. It's a completely different thing. It's a completely different animal. Um, whereas demonic intervention, I guess you want to, if you want to call it that, or demonic will, demonic influences, yeah, influences, is a lot more common. It's everywhere. It's literally yeah. so commonplace. It's disgusting, and it it can it can even happen to Christians sometimes without even realizing it. They're actually doing the will of the devil rather than the will of God because they've drifted away from the, the will of God. Yeah. Right? But they're not possessed. Mm. They can't be possessed. Yeah. Uh, and the Holy Spirit inside of them is grieving. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then that grieving becomes weaker and weaker and it's, you don't feel it. And then at one point you realize, I don't have, the Holy Spirit is no longer in me because he yeah. can no longer be in me because of the way I live. I'm so far away from him that, and it's not God went away from you you went, went away from god yeah because you're following the will of the devil cool yeah um w one of the good examples are regarding to that mm. if you look at james uh chapter three mm. he speaks about the difference between heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom yeah and the way he explains earthly wisdom he speaks about it as demonic mm. okay and one of it is obviously doing it in envy, in in heresies, yeah. in in all these things of the flesh. He he mentions them, but then if you look at that in the church, that can be so subtle, mm -hmm. right? Um, teaching earthly um, wisdom can be so subtle in the church, yeah. and sometimes people might find it okay with. But then, yeah. what does James say? He's saying that is demonic. So yeah. there is a demonic activity when you you create a, uh, an environment for the devil to thrive in. That's right. But then if if you look at, for example, in other places in the Bible where God's calling us to live a holy living, right? And by doing so, we see his presence being more manifest. We're creating that environment to have God's presence among us yeah. in our midst. But then if you're not having that environment for God to come and be a blessing to us and change our hearts, then you're going the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And you're creating an environment for demons to come. Yeah. And be like, well, that's a place we're very comfortable with and we can thrive in. That's right. So it can be subtle, as, as you be. were talking about. It can be like they, they can introduce destructive heresies and it can start off with something that seems like the truth but it's really not like um you have like some heresies that claim to be like f trying to do the, like for example like nestorianism right it started off as trying to protect the deity of christ by saying that oh we shouldn't deify mary by calling her the mother of god when in reality it was nothing to do with mary the whole title of um i believe it's theotokos yeah theotokos it, it it's about christ's divinity that's why we call her the mother of God, because Christ was God. Yeah. And, but do you see how the devil twisted it? And, and that heresy was defending Christ's divinity when in reality it was attacking Christ's divinity by claiming that Mary is not the mother of God. Yeah, that's true. And you look at in the book of Revelation, when mm -hmm. Jesus was rebuking the churches, some of them were actually going to the altar of the devil yeah, and offering themselves to, <clears throat> to, to him. So we just have to be very careful thinking that um, I might be in a church um, and everything is good but as well, not. but that's not the case because as we know, demons are spirits and those four walls are not going to protect you. What's really going to protect you is what God is placing around you. Um, and that a good example of that is Job himself. When... God was speaking to the devil. He says, what about my servant Job? And the devil replied, he's like, 
well, you've placed a hedge around him. Yeah. No one can come near him. So it's not that Joe, he wasn't talking about a fence that Joe put around his tent God or his, yeah, or his animals. It was literally a spiritual hedge, yeah. something that God put around Job. And that's what we need to strive for. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a cross that you might hold in your hand or some special water or oil that's going to protect you. No. God protects. Amen. And if God's not protecting you, then you're vulnerable to, to the devil's attack. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to give a, a little um, thing that, I, that, that happened to me. Uh, I had a dream. Mm. And I believe this dream was allowed by God. So, because I was, before I, I cut you sure, off, sure, sure. I was actually going to ask you, let's move on if we have any experiences in regards yeah. to that. And since you mentioned that, yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. So, um, so by the will of God, I had, I had a dream in which God allowed the devil to come into my dream. And this was at a time when I wasn't a Christian. I was lukewarm, uh, at best, <laughs> mm. um, I don't think I was like, well, I just, I don't think I was a Christian at that time. I was just, I believe there is a God, but I, he wasn't my God. Um, okay. Okay. But I knew, I knew about the Bible because I grew up in it and everything, but I wasn't a Christian. I wouldn't have called myself a Christian. Were it, you like a teenager? Or? Uh, I believe I was in my very early 20s, like 21, 22. Oh, cool. <clears throat> so I had a dream in which I was in my bed and... Um, besides me sat a demon. I don't know the demon's name, but there was a demon sat beside me and his appearance, I could only see from his like thighs down because he was sitting on a chair besides me, uh, besides my bed. And he looked hideous. He looked grotesque. And when, when he wanted to, he changed his appearance and he became something beautiful he changed it he's completely changed his appearance and he changed himself to a, a, a person like a normal human being and i sat up and i i could see him i could interact with him i spoke to him and and he appeared as something incredibly beautiful like a, a incredibly beautiful man like really good looking person um like insanely so like supernaturally good looking it was not normal. And um, I, I, I spoke to him. I said, what are you here for? He, he told me to come with, with him. And he took me outside of the house. And we went outside. We went into the town. And I could see the people. I knew these people. I knew this town. I knew where we were at. We were just in the world. But no one could kind of see us. We were just Everyone was ignoring us. Mm. We could see everyone. But nobody could really see us. And we started talking, he, he and I. And he was telling me about all that he could offer me. He was telling me, oh, I can give you this and this and this knowledge and all these secrets of the world. And and then uh, one of my friends that I know came to me and, and he inter interrupted us. And he said, hey, what are you doing here? And he could not see him almost. It was like he did not know that the devil was there. But he could see me and he started talking to me. And then the devil got upset. And he just said to him, go away. And he listened and he just walked away. And from that, I learned one thing, which is those people there that could not see him. Those are all people that are easily influenced by him. None of, none of them were Christian at the time. My friend now, he's a Christian, glory to God. But um, at that time, he wasn't. And just with the word, he said, go away. He listened. He couldn't see the devil. He couldn't hear the devil. But the, but the suggestions and the words of the devil affected reality, mm. affected the people. Whatever he said, if you were not with God, you would listen. So if he said, walk away, you'd walk away. If he said, sit, you'd sit. If he said, hurt that person over there with words, you'd hurt that person over there with words. Yeah, that reminds me of Ephesians 2. <clears throat> the first two, three verses mm -hmm. speaks about that the sons of disobedience are are obviously following the God of this age. Yeah, yeah. and he is the God of this age. Yeah. And he showed that to me by his power. He said, he pretty much showed me this is all mine. Mm. And But then I asked him a question and then... His mask, the beautiful mask that he had on, started peeling. And I asked him, why don't you not do what you're doing and instead come to God again? Mm -hmm. And I could, his mask crumbled. I saw anger. I, he started becoming ugly again. But 
it's the same face, but his face did not look beautiful. It became darker and, and just, I could feel the anger and hatred and, and sadness and, and hopelessness. Mm. It was like, I can't explain it. It was just anger and, and bitterness and sadness and hopelessness all mixed into one. And I just, when I saw that, it looked disgusting to me. I, his face looked horrible to me. And, and at that point, he knew that there was not going to be a deal because he his mask fell off. I saw who he was. And he knew that whatever he says is not going to work on me because I don't want anything from him because I know that he's hopeless. Yeah. Why would I want something from someone hopeless? So no matter what you have to offer me, it's temporary. It's earthly wisdom. Whatever you give me, it's pointless. It's it's empty. It's hollow, just like your mask. There's, yeah. it's It's fake. That's definitely a unique experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. It's an understatement, man. Yeah. It's, um, but talking to, to that dream, um, something that you were mentioning, and mm -hmm. I'm, it kind of like opens your eyes a bit more to this topic is that there is a beauty that he portrays, mm -hmm. uh, but that's not his, real the thing. real him. No. You know? But then when you look at Christ, the beauty that he portrays, that's him. That's yeah. his reality. Yeah. It, but I think even the ugly version of him, that's not who he is either. Was that was worse. just him trying yeah. to scare me. Yeah. That was just him trying to kind of be on like, you're my enemy type thing. And, and then once he wants to communicate, he changes appearance. But... The real him was when his mask broke and he was actually hurt. And that him was terrifying. Yeah. But at the same time, it wasn't, I wasn't just, I wasn't just scared of him. It was not like a fear. It was like, I, I can't explain that. It's, it's, it's not something I can put into words. Cool. It's, it's something supernatural. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a, not a human face. Yeah. It's something completely different. It's it's scary, but it's not as scary like you're seeing a wild animal. It's scary like I can't I can't explain it. Mm. <laughs> it's it's hard to explain. No, I understand. Yeah. Um, but obviously, we know that um, there is no way for demons to receive salvation. No. So no, no, no. Yes, yeah. that's why he was angry. Yeah. <laughs> he knew that. Thank God that we do have a second chance. Yeah. That God has given us Christ, and He died on the cross. And as it says in Hebrews, that we are his brothers and sisters and God has given him a body and he put that body on the cross yeah. to save his own brothers and sisters. Um, Jesus doesn't call the devil or demons no. his family members, by all means, no. Uh, but he does call us his brothers and his sisters, mm -hmm. and especially as he says, Who's my mother, brother, and sisters? Those who mm -hmm. do the will of my father. That's right. And part of God's will is for us to receive his son, to accept his son. So that's the big blessing that we have in God. Amen. But for those who have, we're coming close to it. I think it's a good point to speak about. Maybe someone's watching this, is feeling uncomfortable about demons. It's like, oh man, I really don't want to have nightmares now or don't want to get paranoid i know that they are in this world yeah. they are always active yeah and they're always trying to get me right that's yeah. their purpose and the reason why they're trying to get us is because by getting us they think that they're trying to get yeah. through god right they can't get to god but they can try to get to mm -hmm. us so what words of comfort would you give to a person who might be struggling with, okay. you know, demonic influences, demonic thoughts. Um, and he feels like I might be praying. Um, I just don't see these things mm -hmm. going away. So um, I, I, I like what Michael said, the angel Michael, when, when he was faced with the devil. Because he did not say anything more than what he needed to. And that was, may the Lord God rebuke you. Mm. So it's not by what I do. It's not about what you can do because we're powerless. And even Michael realized Nothing I can do can defeat because they're, they're both angelic beings, right? He he was a former angel and he's an angel. They're comparable in power. The only difference is Michael was fighting for the king, whereas the the fallen angel was fighting for himself. Yeah. 
And so you rely on your king's influence. You rely on your king's power. Not by my own power, but by my, by my, my kings. But my kings, sorry. Yeah. And I think we should follow what the angel Michael does and rely on the Lord, not rely on ourselves. Cool. So don't entertain it. No. Don't, don't, don't say crime. words, weird words or anything. Just Lord God rebuke. Yeah. I think by Simple. God's authority, that's very Amen. important for us. And spoiler alert is Michael does cast him down from from heaven. Yes. That's written in Revelation. They, they fight and they are cast down to earth. Mm -hmm. um yeah it's been a big blessing thanks for sharing your Thank you. testimony with us um just remember these things are very real um what you read in the gospels where the devil comes to jesus and speaks to him or when jesus casts out demons um this is not um i guess um like metaphors or fables mm -hmm. or any of that They're these real. stories are real um, there are people that might be struggling with, with these, um, you know, entities, mm -hmm. these spirits. But we pray for all of you. Um, and God loves his children above all things. He loves his children. Um, he cares for them. He protects them. So don't think you're on your own on this fight if, yeah. if you are going through something like that. Yeah. As we also said, um, not you don't want to be the type of person that you going to try and look for a demon under every rock. Yeah. There are things that happen in life might be just because of our own decisions. It's you can't blame the devil for your own decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's something very important, but sometimes, and I think we are actually there now mm -hmm. is when, you know how we were speaking about um, a, as a group that if we build the right environment, Right. If, if you're living a holy life, obedient life, you're yes. pursuing God, you're inviting the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. But if you prepare an environment for the devil, right, that's suitable for him, then he comes and, you know, lurks around and starts to live there. That's right. I think in our culture today, we are preparing an atmosphere, an environment mm -hmm. that is really seeking for demons 100%. to come and live and not not only to live and possess but also to rule right you, you're seeing today yeah. hell satan and all these things let that will be coming done, out you know let, let your own will be done yeah rather than god's will and that's kind of what the devil does he serves himself so by you serving yourself you're just like your father the devil yeah so and I'm not meaning you, of course. I mean, I mean the people that yes. that serve themselves. I am a we Christian. Serve, we serve God. Yeah, the trying God. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot about Thank that. Um, maybe we can talk about um, maybe in the next video. Yeah. We can speak about God's presence, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Maybe um, even discernment, like how to discern who, like if it's God, or if it's like the devil that's influencing you. Yeah. Um. And how to know, you know, um, which is which. Uh, That's good. And Cause... and for the sermon, spoiler alert: you just ask God, and He will give it to you. If you wanna, if you wanna know how to discern, and um. But yeah, ultimately, if if we stick to stick to close to God and God's will, then the devil will be far away from us by naturally, you know, his influence on us will never hold. You can try to shoot as many fiery arrows, but if we have our shield up, yeah, that's that's what uh, Paul says in Ephesians six. Yes, yeah. um, keep your armor up. Make sure you're always ready. And uh, God bless you. We'll see you God next time. You. Take, Take care. care.